Yo, your boy's back. Um, it's been a while, I know. Uh, obviously, if you've seen my last video, uh, you know why it's been a while. Uh, but I'm glad to be back, and I'm here to bring you some content. Um, obviously, yesterday we saw the final episode of The Mandalorian. Uh, I would have uploaded the episode, well, this reaction yesterday, but I was crying, so I didn't really want to do it then. And I just wanted to take it all in and kind of digest it properly. Um, but it's probably my favourite episode that I've seen so far from every single Mandalorian episode. Um, it's a bit of a toss up, but um, I'm going to kind of break down what happened in the episode and just spoil what is ahead. But um, obviously, before I continue, uh, please make sure to uh, like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you can be notified of what's coming over the Christmas period. But uh, let's start off and break down this episode. Um, obviously, we start off with Boba chasing down an Imperial shuttle which holds uh, the clone engineer Pershing. Um, obviously, uh, it's a sick way to start it. Uh, Boba Fett is just really cool and is being utilised very well uh, in this Mandalorian season, which I'm enjoying. Um, we see them finally capture the shuttle and we see a very menacing shot of Boba slowly flying above the shuttle and landed on it. Uh, obviously we see one of the pilots uh, kind of hot his situation with Pershing and mock Cara Dune on Alderaan and losing her family I'm guessing. We don't know yet but I'm going to assume so. Um, and Cara gives him a chance to stop. He goes a bit further and then she in the head. Um, after this we land on a planet which I don't know the name of yet but it looks like a mining planet and um, we see when Boba lands bo ship the gauntlet from the Clone Wars which obviously if you know Clone Wars that will tick in your head straight away that it's bo um, we go to Cantina see a sick shot of Boba and Mando walking in um, we see Boba bo and Reeves have a bit of a conflict. Uh, bo is insulting Boba, and then Boba talking down to them like they're inferior, and then we see Reeves and Boba fight. Uh, obviously it's broken up by bo um, And then we see Mando and bo agree that uh, she'll help him save the child if she retrieves the Darksaber. Now, we don't know at this point that the Darksaber... Uh, well, we know that the Darksaber is signifies that you rule Mandalore but we didn't know uh, a little detail which I'll come on to in a minute um, we cut back to Slave 1 inside it where Pershing is pointing out where the Dark Troopers are and where Grogu is and um, I don't know why he's helping them maybe he hasn't got an attachment to Empire maybe he a bit like Boba who doesn't really care um, Obviously, we see a plan concoct in the uh, in the slave one. Uh, we see it work pretty well, uh, but I'll explain the plan. Where it's basically, Boba's gonna fake shoot the Imperial ship, which will hold Mando, Fennec, Kara, Reeves, Bo-Katan. And I don't know where Pershing is, but I think he's the one. I think he's also yeah. I don't know where he is, but. Um, Obviously, we see that go well. Uh, we see, um, I don't know who was flying, I feel Bo Tadal flying, uh, crash into the hangar of the Imperial Light Cruiser, and uh, we see a badass sequence with uh, the lasses of the Mandalorian. And I just can't wait to see Fennec in Bad Batch, and I can't, see, can't wait to see what they do with the other characters as well. Uh, combat wise, they are top tier. Um, obviously we see Mando sneak about and try and get to the Dark Troopers before they are activated. Unfortunately one of them held the doors open when he shut it. Terminator 2 style, badass. Uh, and we see obviously their phase 3 armour, immune to blast fire and stuff. Um, we see Mando really struggle against them and uh, whilst he's uh, against the wall, whamming his head into the wall, his his helmet's not breaking at all. He's just getting pushed into the wall. So 
I mean, I think that just really shows how strong Best Car can be. Um, also, we've seen Mado get the better of the Dark Trooper by stabbing him with his Best Car spear through the neck. And then he opens the door behind them and sucks them all, all out into the back, vacuum of space. And at that point, I was like, ah, it's over already with them. Uh, they were pretty cool and just, ah, bleh. Um, and then after that, obviously, we see some more sick fighting and we see them uh, arrive at, I'm guessing it's the control room where Gideon is not there. And then we cut back to Mando, who goes to where Grogu is, opens the door, and we see Gideon, the Darksaber, over Grogu's head. And we see Gideon trick Mando into thinking that he could just hate the child and leave Gideon alone. But no, Gideon attacks Mando, and I think this just shows that Gideon knows that the Mandalorian is better in combat than him, and that's probably why he tried to trap him and trick him. Uh, we see a good two minute fight between them uh, we see the dark saber wham into the best gas spear multiple times and make it start glowing which uh, I think pardon me um, if he kept the dark saber there for a bit longer it might might decide to melt the spear which I find interesting and we kind of leave that up to our interpretation because maybe it could absorb the energy and use it against the dark saber or maybe it'll just melt through the best gar armor or the spear sorry who knows uh obviously we see mando get the best of gideon uh he has him handcuffs takes grogu to the control room and we see bo -Katan surprised at what mando's done mando doesn't realize what's happened until gideon explains that the only way that bo -Katan can receive the dark saber now it's by beating Din Djarin on a Mandalorian in combat. Now, season three, I feel like it's going to be centered around Bo Katan and Mando's kind of little civil war clashing, because obviously, the, uh, I don't think we'll see Grogu for about up until episode six. Maybe Luke will need Mando again to help secure Grogu's like livelihood. Maybe he's been captured by the Empire again on the First Order. Um, also, we see bo -Katan there, like, about 10 seconds, we're waiting to see what she does, but then we see about a put, well, as uh, Gideon describes it as, a platoon of dark troopers that flew out earlier come back in and uh, make the way to the control room, where we see Gideon slowly laughing and explaining that the only people that will be left alive will be him and the child, because obviously... The Dark Troopers have been programmed to not kill the child and not kill Gideon, of course. Uh, we see them just absolutely wrecking the living hell out of the wall, uh, trying to get into the control room. Obviously, they have the blast door, so it's three layers of thick metal. Uh, they are really denting the wall in. And then we see, I think it was Fennec on the control pad. Uh, identify one X-Wing. <sighs> and we see Kerodu make fun of it saying, oh great, one X-Wing, we're saved. Lord does she know that X-Wing holds the most powerful Jedi alive today. Luke motherfucking Skywalker. <laughs> um, yeah, I really didn't want to do the review yesterday because I was crying my head off and I'm nearly crying now. Um, but just seeing Luke like being utilised finally in a good way by Disney is just so good and so right, man. Like, just it's been so long since we've seen Luke fight, and that fight was fucking amazing. Some Rogue One style shit going on there, and so oh, beautiful. Um, just the way that Luke looked in that was just so sick, like. Taking out the dark troopers like it was wood, like, and then we, and then we finally realised that Grogu had been contacting Luke Skywalker at the Seed Stone on Typhon. Uh, we see Luke just cut through everyone on the on the cameras, and then we cut to the dark troopers turning around to an elevator 
watched it slowly go up until it ticked and Luke came out and did some Rogue One style shit which was similar to Vader which we see that whilst you can instill fear in the galaxy maybe it's fear for the good of the people which Luke did unlike Vader who did it for the bad we see Luke absolutely decimate the living hell out of them uh, with Form 4 and just cut through them whilst not showing his face at all but Gideon knows who it is he knows the myth and the legend of Luke Skywalker he knew as soon as he saw the outfit and the coloured lightsaber and heard that it was one X-Wing it was done for and whilst he's going through them we see Gideon actually shoot himself which Kerodun just goes into his head he gets knocked out and then we see Luke open the doors after defeating the Dark Troopers and we see him walk in uh, Mando asks him are you a Jedi he said yes uh, he doesn't say that Grogu was the one who contacted him on the Sea Stone but we can tell that Luke knows who Grogu is so that means we kind of know that he was the one that he contacted at the Seed Stone. We see Luke uh, kind of tell Din on the Mando that Grogu was asking him permission to go with Luke Skywalker. And then we see Baby Yoda or Grogu, whichever one you want it to be, slowly grab Mando's helmet or try to with his little thimble fingers. And Mando takes off his helmet. We see that he's about to burst into tears. He gives Baby Yoda to Luke. But before that, we see him walk across the floor. And we see him, motherfucking Ardu Tito, come from behind Luke. And just. Two of the most underutilized people in, sequel, in the original trilogy are being properly used now. And I'm just so fucking happy about it. Obviously, I think this will lead to a Grogu and Luke show where we see Grogu being trained and we see Logan, Grogu grow up. But I don't think that the Mandalorian will last without Grogu for another three seasons. So I think we still need to have Grogu integrated into it. Maybe we see Grogu team up with Mando a little bit after he's honed his Jedi skills a little bit more. Or we can see maybe Snoke or something come into play here finally. Um, obviously there's a lot of unknown about season 3 but we know he's already started filming and stuff uh, but obviously we see Luke take Grogu see them go the elevator door shut slowly and we turn to see Mando in tears uh, obviously I missed out a little bit that Gideon was shooting bo a lot but she survived because of the best guy armor um, obviously it ends at that point but then an after credit scene we see Fennec and Boba at Jabba's palace and we see him kill uh, Jabba's second in command I'm really sorry I don't know his name and then it cuts to the book of Boba Fett December 2021 and this episode I really wanted it to be 50 minutes long and it was and I've thank the lord that it was a uh, 30 minute episode would have been too short just there's no need for a 30 minute episode for a final episode um, overall this season whilst I was worried at the start that we might have been ruined with all the Skywalker Saga characters like Ahsoka, Luke, Boba R2 they did it well and they did it so that the storyline was a two of involved around them specifically but we still got the Mandalorian as the main focus of the story but um, overall if I were to give this episode a rating I would give it a 9.5 out of 10 just seeing Luke just gave me feelings that I've never had like just probably the only person who could make me feel that way in Star Wars he's probably Anakin and just (sighs) 
Luke, for a lot of people, is like a safe haven if, like, it's just. I can't really talk about it, but, yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, that's the end of the video. Uh, tomorrow, I will release another video uh, where I will be uh, explaining. Well, it's one or two options. Uh, I'll I'll tell you one which I think I'm going to do tomorrow, and that is why Obadiah Stane is the most underrated MCU villain, or one of the most underrated villains since 2000, and why. So, guys, if you want to stay tuned, please do. Please make sure to like, subscribe, turn notifications. Stay interested. Stay posted. Stay theorizing.